it's the middle of Pride Month, which means that I am morally obligated to make some kind of gender identity and or sexual orientation related video. No, I mean it. I'm literally obligated to. There's a tiny drag queen behind the camera right now who is threatening my life if I don't make this video right now. See, they are dangerous. Every year, I, like so many other queer content creators on the app, want to discuss something related to Pride Month, something related to its history or, you know, my own identity and stuff. But just like with my goth content, it can get kind of redundant after a while and it can get kind of difficult to come up with new things to talk about when it comes to that stuff. But there is an aspect of my life and many people's lives in the queer community that is a huge source of infighting within the LGBTQIA plus community. Now, it's sad to admit there is even infighting at all because every single one of us within the community knows what it's like to be marginalized. Every single one of us within the community knows what it feels like to be othered, outcasted, to be treated like shit, and verbally, as well as in many cases, physically assaulted for being who we are. So we should know better than to treat each other that way. Nonetheless, it still happens, and it happens more frequently than many people would probably think. And one of the main sources of this contention comes from the T umbrella. Now, there's a lot of different umbrella categories in the LGBTQIA plus community. LGBTQIA plus is already a mouthful to say in day-to-day -day speech, and it gets increasingly difficult when you're talking about like sub and sub sub and sub 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 sects of different groups. We all acknowledge that each other exists and for our own community and allies it's just sometimes easier to have an umbrella. So the T umbrella is of course the trans umbrella. This covers things like transgender people, people who are non-binary, people who are gender fluid, and so on and so forth. And each umbrella category carries a lot of things. Like another example is like under the bisexual umbrella you have things like pansexual that are similar but not exactly the same. Similar enough, it can go under the same, you know, subcategory, but it's not interchangeable with the word bisexual. So, what is the infighting about? Why does it happen? Well, the infighting predominantly happens between the binary transgender people in the group and the non-binary people in the group. Obviously, I can't speak for everyone. Nobody can. There are some group joint consensus and stuff when it comes to some of this stuff but you also have to understand that each person is an individual they've gone through their own life experiences they've you know had their own struggles and their own successes so no two people are going to think exactly alike when it comes to this stuff but on the whole what happens is a lot of people who are non-binary also call themselves trans or say they're part of the trans community and they want to you know be treated better by society as a trans person. And as soon as some members of the non-binary community started coming out and calling themselves trans, the transgender community got really pissed off about it and they made their feelings very known. A lot of people have come out with a lot of videos on TikTok and YouTube. There's giant like multi-page documents on Tumblr and Twitter and all these twit longers and stuff from people Facebook posts because yeah people actually still do that on Facebook interesting where they try to prove why non-binary people shouldn't be categorized as transgender people and that by calling ourselves part of the transgender community we are basically diminishing their identity and their description of the word transgender and it's According to some of them, going to set the movement back so far that, you know, there's still a long way to go, but we've at least made some headway with a lot of allies and stuff. And with the fact that a lot of the states that have tried to pass hateful laws have been unsuccessful in that, that's all well and good. And 
a lot of them have this idea that it's, you know, this whole negative thing and you can't be calling yourselves that. And there was a lot of pushback from the non-binary community. A lot of people who are non-binary were trying to argue, well, as a transgender person, who are you to dictate how someone else identifies themselves? Who are you to determine whether or not someone else is transgender because some of you are out here, you know, talking about how harmful it is to have this trans medicalist attitude because a lot of people who are trans cannot get the necessary surgeries to physically change their sex and calling them less trans as a result of that is a really fucked up thing to do. It can make people very dysphoric. It can make them damn near suicidal in some cases because you're already not equal outside of your group and then you lose equality inside the group. You can see how that would cause some problems there. And then you've got everyone else who wants to chime in based on their life experiences with trans people or non-binary people who are their friends or their family members or what have you and attempting to be allies and help whoever they think is getting more hurt. But unfortunately, all it sometimes does is shout over the people who are saying, please just give me human rights and treat me like a person. Now, I might get some hate for saying this, but honestly, the first time I started seeing a lot of people within the transgender community coming at non-binary people and telling them that they can never identify as transgender, that they're not transgender, it's two different things, and that being non-binary is nothing more than like how you express yourself, your hairstyle, whether or not you have makeup on, your clothing style, aesthetics, all that stuff, and that being transgender is more than your aesthetics, so people who are non-binary need to cut that out. It reminded me strongly of turf rhetoric. Before you get your torches and pitchforks, let me explain why I'm saying that. The reason it reminds me of turf rhetoric is why are people turfs? How can you call yourself a feminist but then try to take rights away from transgender women? It doesn't make a lot of sense on paper, does it? Well, it's because of lack of education and lack of understanding. Now, if you are a cisgender woman, you can be understanding of transgender women, you can sympathize, you can empathize, you can never fully truly understand what it is like to be a transgender woman though, because you will never have that lived experience. Same with me. I am not a transgender woman, so I cannot fully grasp what it is like to live life day to day as a transgender woman, nor will I ever have that life experience and be able to fully grasp it. However, I do understand that the way they are treated in society is absolutely deplorable. I understand that they are murdered at the most excessive rate of anyone else in our community. And our community, as well as people outside of it, need to do a lot more to fix that. A lot of women who are the, like, extreme, like, radical feminists who become TERFs down the line, they get to that point because they have had to work their asses off. Their ancestors have had to work their asses off to obtain what rights they do have. And arguably, even in so-called first world nations, women are still not held to the same standard as men. They are still not treated the same way as men. They are still less likely to get certain jobs that men are likely to get. They still have to prove themselves. They still get assaulted and stuff. Like, equality is not fully there yet for women. And just like with any other marginalized group, it's understandable that they get incredibly frustrated by that, that they get angry about that, that they want to get out there and march and fight for those rights and say, hey, I'm here, I deserve to be here, and I also deserve to be treated like a fucking human being just like you're being treated like one. Understandable. The problem is, put yourself for a minute in the head of the turfs. I know it's not a fun place to be, but just humor me for a second. So in the mind of a turf, they're like, I'm sitting here fighting pretty much a losing battle every day. No matter how loud I shout, no matter how hard I fight, there's still a patriarchy. It's still being upheld. It's still being lorded over women and women are being treated as lesser than men, no matter what. And now these people who grew up as male in society, depending on when they transitioned, because they don't consider that. They never consider 
that transgender men exist. So putting yourself in that mindset, they're like, well, you grew up as a man. You had all the same privileges as a man. You didn't have to deal with the hatred and the misogyny and the pain and the abuse that women have had to grow up with. It's an assumption. Assumptions always give rise to hate. You should never assume anything about a group that you are not a part of. You should always ask questions of those who are more than happy to answer those questions. It's the only way we truly learn and understand. But people don't do that, do they? Instead, they make assumptions based on just what they perceive as the truth. So you have these women who are already angry because they feel like, you know, things are going nowhere for them, that they're fighting every day and no one's listening to them and no one's helping them. And now these people that they perceive as having grown up and walked the world as men with privilege suddenly want to be women and enter women's spaces and they're pissed because they view it as, well, you haven't had the same lived experiences as a woman. So who are you to determine, you know, what we need? Who are you to come in here and fight alongside us and say what we deserve? You used to be a man. And it is fucked up that they think that way, but that is how they think. That is turf rhetoric. It's very harmful because, like I said, assumptions do nothing but breed hate. Like, assumptions are a terrible thing to do. Like, it is human nature to assume things at first, but you should always stop yourself a minute and go, hold on, hold on. Where did I come up with that? Did it just get formulated in my own brain? Or is there actual, like, facts, logic, peer-reviewed study on this? If you haven't deeply looked into it and actually spoken, spoken to large amounts of people on either side of this issue you don't know. That's just the facts. You just don't know. So the same thing that happens with that is happening with the transgender people who don't want anything to do with non-binary people and want us to stop considering ourselves trans. They're like, well, what the hell? We're getting like mass abuse, mass murdered. We're having our rights taken away left and right to the point where we're even having to leave our state, leave our families behind, our jobs, our friends, potentially pets and stuff, maybe a partner. You have to pick up and leave everything behind. Go someplace that maybe you've never been because for anyone outside the United States, each individual U.S. state is like its own micro nation. Like I am not joking about to ask anyone who's spent a long time here. States are very different from one another and there is a different culture in each U.S. state. It's a lot for people to be doing this, and it's natural that the transgender community is upset about this, is hurt, is scared, is pissed off beyond all reason. Totally valid, all of that. So obviously in one video, I can't go over every single assumption that's made. So what I'm going to do is talk through a couple of the main ones that I have experienced myself or that I have seen the most often. So the first one is that non-binary can't be considered a part of being trans because non-binary people don't experience gender dysphoria. Have you asked every single non-binary person on the planet whether or not they experience it? Because uh, I guarantee you'll probably be surprised by the answer, but it's, it's unbelievable how many transgender people I've seen in the community saying, well, you don't experience dysphoria the way I have, you're never going to have to go to therapy to prove who you are to a stranger. You're never going to have to go before a judge and legally change your name and deal with the family implications and ramifications of that. You're never going to have to go on HRT. You're never going to have to experience painful, debilitating surgeries or the fact that you will never be able to get those surgeries if you want them. So you are therefore not trans. Myself, as well as several other non-binary people, actually go through pretty much all of that. Again, not a monolith, can't speak for everyone. For some non-binary people, it is all about simple gender expression. They have decided to shirk the goofy gender roles of the country they're currently residing in. They said, wait a minute, when you look back in history, like men in Europe of status had like caked on makeup and high heels and crazy bright colors and tall hair and then one day it just switched and everyone decided that was womanish well that doesn't make sense if it was manly in the past how can it not be manly in the future that's weird 
And they've just said, screw it, do whatever you want, who cares if a cisgender heterosexual man wants to wear a skirt one day because he thinks it feels comfy, go for it. If a cisgender heterosexual woman wants to have a more masculine haircut and not wear makeup and wear suits all the time, power to her, let her do it, whatever. For some non-binary people, that is all that it is. But that is not every non-binary person. Just like not all trans people are the same, not all non-binary people are the same. My best friend began by calling himself non-binary. He called himself non-binary and used they, them pronouns for several years, I believe a close to a decade, before realizing he was a transgender man and going toward he, they pronouns and going on HRT, and ultimately he is eventually going to get a surgery. Same with myself and many other non-binary people. For some people, it is easier to take the smaller step toward non-binary first before coming out as trans. One, because some people aren't 100% sure yet. If you grew up in an environment where these things were not discussed, it's near impossible for you to know exactly where you fit. That is why you see a lot of people in the LGBTQIA plus community re-coming out or changing what they are every few years they're not changing what they are. The problem is that in society, it is still so frowned upon and still so not normalized to discuss gender identity and sexual orientation that people legitimately don't know where they fall. They might think that they are bisexual and then they try to date a couple different genders and realize, nope, I am gay, 100% gay, only want people like me. They may think that they are gay and realize later on through trial and error they're actually pansexual. It's a learning process. Just like how heterosexual people have a preference for like what kind of guy they want to date or what kind of girl they want to date. It's, it's similar to that notion, only it's like, I don't know what bits I want to be involved in. And in some cases, none at all with some ace people. So for some people, they're like, I feel like I'm going to have less pushback and it's going to be a little less scary to start out saying I'm non-binary and when I feel a little more comfortable in myself and I've had more time to express myself the way I want to, that's when I can come out as trans and it'll kind of soften the blow. But again, not everyone. Other people like myself, for example, I call myself non-binary because one, medically, I don't have hormones. Medically, if you want to make the argument, oh, like your whatever your hormones are, I don't have any. And that came from a surgery that I did not choose to have. It's one that I needed to have to save my life. But it was my choice to never get on any kind of hormone because I'm fine without them. I have absolutely no problem. I've had no issues with it. And my doctor and I talked about it and he was like, hey, if it's not bothering you at all, do what you want to do. I was very lucky in that regard. I also am an alternative person. As an alternative person, I like to do the big poofy Susie Sue hair sometimes. Or some days I look like this and other days I have crazy glittery goth makeup on. And guess what? If you go to a goth music festival, some people you'll be able to tell if it's a dude or a chick and other people, I guarantee you will have no idea what that person is just by looking at them. <laughs> because some of us like to do the same style of makeup. It's how it's been since the 80s. The men in the goth subculture in the 80s were also wearing colorful eyeshadow and huge bold eyeliner and red lips and stuff. And some of them still do to this day. And... I've always thought calling myself non-binary would just make life easier for the people around me because a lot of people who are outside the community, who are even allies sometimes, don't understand, well, how can you be a boy but not have HRT, not have surgeries and stuff, 
not present yourself in a more masculine nature? How can that be boy then on the days you have like giant false eyelashes on and lipstick? Makeup has no bearing on gender and we need to get away from that weird thought process as a society. I'm an artist. In the morning, a great warm-up for me before I have to sit here shading faces all day is doing it to my own face. Also, there's the fact that given my usual financial situation and my usual medical situation, I do not know whether or not it will ever be feasible for me to get any kind of surgery. I don't want HRT. I get mistaken for a young boy and like teenage boy and stuff on the phone all the time. So I don't feel like I need to do anything to my voice. I think my voice is fine. It's why I'm used to hearing. It's not a big deal. I think it's androgynous enough that it's not an issue for me. And other than that, like when I just go out without makeup on, people assume I'm a dude half the time as long as I've got a binder on. Like it's sometimes hard for people to tell already. So I'm like, eh, I don't need a lot. But Here's where we come to the argument of, well, it sounds like everything about it is just aesthetics for you, so you can't be considered part of the transgender community. I have extreme dysphoria. I've had it for a very long time, since before I knew the word for it. I have days like last night, for example. Last night I was completely exhausted. All I wanted to do was go to sleep and stay asleep. I couldn't. I woke up five times because I was like, I hate that... I have the chest that I do. It makes me so uncomfortable. Sometimes I go days not showering just so I don't have to see it and acknowledge its existence. I hate that even when I'm wearing a binder and everyone assures me, no, no one can see anything. It looks like a man's chest. We promise, we promise you. And I look in a photo and they're right. I can see bumps from up here, so it still bothers me. So I'm like, I always want top surgery, which if you're not dysphoric, you're not going to usually want top surgery. I want top surgery one day, but then I had this moment of panic where I was like, but when people get top surgery, most of them have huge long scars. And when people see those huge long scars, they assume that you're a transgender man, they think they're clocking you, and you have that whole load of problems I don't want to have to deal with. Oh god, what do I do? Because they do. I've seen people who have had mastectomies for breast cancer, and I've seen men who had gynecomastia who have had to get those scars, and people automatically just assume they're transgender men. Because people are fucking stupid, and everyone who says, I can always tell, has no idea what the hell they're talking about. Obviously, there's solutions. There's like further plastic surgery to remove the scars, or covering them up with tattoos, but middle of the night, my brain was not considering those options, it was just going into panic mode. That's extreme levels of dysphoria. I didn't even get out of bed for a while. I was under the blanket, even though I'm home alone right now, just having a miserable time until my cat came to comfort me. If you want to claim that you need dysphoria to be a transgender person, what do you call me going through with that? What do you call other non-binary people who go through that same thing every day, who also don't shower for days at a time because they can't stand to see the parts that they have? because they just want to be more nullified or they want to go through a binary sex transition, but they still consider themselves non-binary. And now I want to get to the other main thing that I commonly hear, and it's, well, you're not transgender, because even though you consider yourself non-binary, whenever I see you in a video or a photo on Instagram, you look binary girl, which is the sex you were you know, assigned at birth, or you look binary boy, what you were assigned at birth. So I've just decided since you appear as what is on your birth certificate, you can't be part of the transgender community. Are, one, are we forgetting drag kings and queens exist right now? Like, what? <laughs> and then there's the fact that, like, Makeup doesn't mean anything. Just this morning, I was scrolling through my FYP on TikTok and saw a cisgender heterosexual man who is showing men how to do eyeliner to make their eyes look more beautiful. I've seen gorgeous black men showing how to even out their skin tone with foundation and concealer every day. Very cishet men too. 
Makeup is just fucking face paint. Like, why are we making such a big deal about it? If your husband wants to have hot pink fingernails and false lashes on because it makes him feel kind of cool that day, why do you care so much? It's weird. I'm never going to understand why people are so fixated on that stuff. Like, I hate to break it to you, but you know that movie star you think is really fucking hot? He's wearing makeup in the like, yeah, they're all wearing makeup in the movie. Oh god, he's got foundation on, he's not a man anymore! But basically, to wrap the video up, transgender people who have an issue with non-binary people considering themselves part of the transgender umbrella, you should know better. You should know better than to have any kind of thought process like that because you have had to go through that. You have gone through a lifetime's worth of people outside of your community telling you that you are not the gender that you feel you are inside. You have had to deal with people online and even in your own families who have told you it doesn't matter what hormones you take or what surgeries you get, you will still be dead name. And you know how incredibly painful it is to have other people decide that they're entitled to dictate what you are. It's a disgusting thing to do to another human being. So don't do it to us, please. Stop assuming what a non-binary person is and what that means to each individual person. Ask questions if you have them. Some of us are more than happy to answer them to the best of our abilities. But just acceptance starts from within. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, I long for the day that you don't have to come out anymore. You can just bring a partner home and everyone accepts it. I long for the day... I don't have to hide within my own community. I long for the day that there's no such thing as biphobia or transphobia or non-binary phobia within the LGBTQIA plus community and that no matter what the people outside there are doing, we can just lift each other up instead of tearing each other down. I love all of you, regardless of what you identify as. I just want the same respect back and so do a lot of non-binary people. But that's all I've got for you today. I hope you're doing well and do something that makes you happy today, so long as you're harming none in the process. I'll see everyone again soon.